Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. Corey and Chad here chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Now Jordan, look, today, Wednesday, January 31st, it's a Fed day. A lot of people, eyes on the Fed, and as we're recording this, about an hour and a half after the Fed statement, well, we're seeing that usual volatility that we always see after the statement and the press conference This volatility is going to carry into tomorrow, and I always find the day after the press conference and statement more of, uh, I guess, where the market settles out direction-wise. Jordan, I know you really don't like looking at this kind of stuff, but I do have to ask you, what's your thought on Fed days and the amount of emphasis and attention put on these Fed announcements? Uh, I think it's, I I don't care what the Fed said. I think that press conference is completely ridiculous the whole idea that they need to have a press conference and thirdly we should all be spending more time on researching companies than trying to do macro predictions or much less following the fed which is completely ridiculous i mean thinking about the fed and the macro i mean we could just dumb it down and say Look, we're clearly in a situation where the the Fed, they're not going to hike because rates are sufficiently high, but at the same, they can't, they can't cut when the market is at a new all time high and given the GDP, the last GDP number that we had. So that would look really bad if they were going to cut. So the Fed follows the market. This is all market dependent. If the stock market continues to make new highs over the coming months, the Fed easing is going to be pushed out later in the year. Now, if the market really struggles, if it's going to correct, you know, 10% over the next couple months, you get some bad economic reports, the employment data gets worse, then the that gives the Fed, that gives them the leeway to cut policy. So it, it, it's all market dependent on this point. And what Powell said, I mean, this and you know, the CPI is this. I mean, it's just it's a lot of nonsense and it's just best to keep it simple and spend time researching your companies more so than macro analysis, because that's what the smartest investors do. People who are way, way, way smarter than me. So I've been doing more of that in recent months, and I, I quite enjoy it, actually, researching companies than trying to you know predict every wiggle in the gold and silver price in certain miners. I mean, I, I will get more into that when it's appropriate, you know, maybe when gold breaks out and we get into a real bull market and there's actually some consistent volume and trends going on, you know, that stuff will be more important. I am following breadth indicators, which I know we'll get into to you know, give me a sense of when things get too oversold. You know, aside from that, I just think just don't worry about the Fed and just don't spend any time on it. It's just a complete waste. Well, Jordan, some cogent thoughts there. I think a lot of times people get so focused on all the noise that they miss the signal in the actual companies. Just to that point, let's tug on that thread for a second. You said you're looking at the breath indicators and the precious metals miners. What kind of things are you looking at in your own portfolio or when you're talking to subscribers that get your attention either on buying setups like good opportunities or when things maybe are needing to cool down and it's time to get out of position how are you looking at the precious metals mining stocks and what's the key indicators you're watching for well now i'm looking at breadth indicators which you may recall i think it was in december when they were at certain levels where the implication was that there would probably be another leg higher in the sector now i i don't think that scenario is completely busted although the probability is that that scenario is probably busted but again it's not completely busted. So it's certainly possible that they could rebound and rally at some point. And, and by the way, gold's pretty close to 2100. So, I mean, even though I'd be surprised if gold was able to break out here uh, in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months, if that were to happen, then you could definitely see the miners, you know, stage a good rebound here over the next uh, or over the coming months. Uh, but aside from that, I'm looking at, uh, breadth indicators now to see if we get more selling in the sector and maybe we'll start to see extremes. I mean, looking at the percentage of of Huey and GDXJ stocks that closed above the 20-day, 50-day, 200-day moving averages, 
Uh, the, the, in terms of the 50 day and the 200 day, I mean, I, I think the low we had about seven days ago or so, uh, those were somewhere in the high teens, kind of in the low twenties. So last I checked a couple of days ago, somewhere in the twenties, somewhere in the 30% area. So yeah, I mean, the miners are still a little bit oversold, but they're not oversold enough where, you know, a rally's going to come, but at the same time, they're not oversold enough where it precludes there being more selling and then they get even more oversold. So I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens with that. You know, maybe they'll get more oversold in the next couple of weeks, and that and that could be a low risk entry point for the sector. But you know, in, in terms of companies and looking at you know, company analysis, you know, certainly I look at their charts, but I am more focused on fundamentals now and and, and news and you know what could potentially drive value. You know, over the next three, six, and nine months. What do you think does drive value in the stocks then? Because in all fairness, it seems like maybe a handful of stocks are bucking the trend and moving higher. And those have a wide range of different stories. Some are mid-tier producers. There's a couple explorers that are doing well. But broadly, doesn't really seem like what kind of news companies put out. It seems to just continue to drift lower. A lot of stocks. Yeah, you can't apply uniform analysis here and just say it's it's one thing versus another. I mean, I would say one thing that pops in my head is getting permits. I mean, we know that most jurisdictions are worse than they were, uh, particularly in the Americas, worse than they were you know, 10, 20 years ago. So for some companies that are really cheap, it could be getting a permit that could be a, a catalyst for a nice pop. For other companies, it could be Maybe they're building a mine and then it's just them getting further along in the construction process, like them getting closer uh, to the beginning of production, because when that happens, you could see a stock being re-rated. Uh, for other companies, it could be, well, they've started to produce, but there's some kinks that they have to iron out and, and that sort of thing. So it's it's in terms of producers, it's execution. If you're looking at exploration companies, it could be May, you know, obviously making new discoveries. You know, they they already have a resource, but they're testing a new area of the project. And if they, you know, have a really good results in that area, that implies that the resource is going to grow and that there's, you know, there more potential economic value there. So it depends on the company. And, and the other thing we have to think about is the markets discount these things three to six months in advance. So it is difficult. It is difficult to just assume, you know, it, it's the, the, again, that it's uniform and that, okay, there's one thing for this explorer developer and it's the same for everything else. So you really have to take everything on a company by company basis. And I would say you also have to try and buy things. I don't like the word cheap, but let's just say you know, buy things at a really good value and, and the price is somewhat depressed, but the fundamentals are still there. I mean, it, that that's hard to figure out. And that's something I, you know, being a technical analyst, you're always fascinated with bullish charts and your know, cup and handles and breakouts that it's really hard to buy things when they have a shitty looking chart. But I think that if you see something with really good fundamentals and maybe they don't need to raise immediately, but they're, the stock is fairly depressed. Those are the type of situations that could be buying opportunities like the SILJ rebalance that we just saw. I mean, it didn't last long. I mean, some of those companies are still depressed, but there there were I mean, there were some companies we saw that had huge moves higher that day, but there were some that also plunged and you know, they did recover the next day, but that I mean, that's that's one example of a a buying opportunity. Well, Jordan, while we're on the topic of how you position in these precious metal stocks looking for opportunities, there are the alpha plays, what people call catalyst hunting. You're looking for that drill discovery hole. You're looking for that key permit. You're looking for that economic study or resource, or maybe a growth in production quarter over quarter. That's the catalyst side of the business where they can outperform on an alpha basis. But then there's the other side of it where there's just a lot of projects out there that have a million, two million, three million ounces of gold, or maybe they got 100 million, 200 million ounces of silver. And it's getting to a silly valuations for the ounces in the ground. Those are more the beta or optionality plays. Do you have time for both of those in your portfolio? Do you look at them differently? How do you separate the catalyst alpha plays from the optionality beta plays? Well, the, the catalyst for too many companies now, I think last week I said that too many 
things, like almost everything has become an optionality play. I mean, that's what happens when you're been in a bear market for several years. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's, it's company dependent and it's also looking at like what I'm trying to do here and now is looking at these companies and just assuming, you know, 2000 gold or 1900 gold, what's the value of these companies there. And if the gold price, if that's the gold price, 12 or 18 months from now, which companies can still do really well. So that's something I'm looking and, and for, for silver, I mean, the, the, the same goes for, you know, $24 silver or $22 silver, you know, whatever it is right now. So I, I think those are the companies I'm really trying to identify right now versus the companies that they're just, they're, they're really going to struggle and they just, they don't really have any upside unless, you know, gold goes to 2,400, 2,700 silver needs to go to 28, $30 again. I mean, those companies you can kind of put on the back burner. And I think when it looks like the sector is really, when it looks like the gold price is really close to breaking out, then I think, you know, you can kind of move those things off the back burner. But for now, I, I think you really need to focus on, again, the companies that at fixed metals prices can really add a lot of value over the next, you know, one to two years. I mean, it, you know, it, it could be building a mine. It could be, they're growing production over the next two or three years, just whatever the reasons are, if they can add significant value at current metals prices, those are the, the companies that you want to own right now. And, and look, you, you have, there's, there's some out there, there's not tons, but they're hard to find and, and you have to do your research. And, you know, if you do the research, I think maybe over the next few months, you could find a handful of those. So Jordan, I want to ask you how you view some of these momentum plays within the sector. A very few number of stocks are running higher and some of them have been running higher for a little while. A lot of commentators and a lot of investors really look bearishly on these stocks and say, oh, they're not going to be able to follow up on, say, that drill hole or they're not going to be able to build that mine at what they say they will. But some of these stocks do have some momentum to the upside. And even better, they're cashed up because they have been able to raise money. How do you view some of these companies where the market is saying they are better, at least right now, than the wide range of other stocks? Generally, I try and avoid those. I mean, they, they tend to be mostly on the exploration side, and that's just not my area of expertise. So I would be, if you don't own those stocks that are, moving up significantly, I would be cautious. Now, if it's a producer that's making that move, then you have to think about, okay, well, what's the value of this company at the current gold price? Like what, you know, what this stock right now, right now you're looking at the you know 2000 gold or 1900 gold. What is the value of this company 12 months from now, 24 months from now at that gold price? And if, I mean, if there's a lot of value potentially in one to two years and the stock is moving, I mean, the, the company is kind of undervalued or a good value, and then the stock's moving up and it's making a really strong move, then, you know, maybe it's okay to add, you know, buy into that or add to that position. I mean, you don't need to necessarily do a full position immediately, but you could scale into it now versus if it's a, again, an exploration story. I, I just don't have the expertise on that. And I mean, those, it, it's it's really difficult. I mean, for every, uh, I was going to say snowflake, but for every snow line gold and every uh, great bear, there's hundreds that, you know, ma they make the same move and then they just fizzle out and just go right back down. So you really have to know what you're doing and you just have to use common sense. I mean, if you're in those and the thing makes a huge move, take a little bit off the table you know, remove your risk that way. And if it, you know, you, you can still have some capital in there. So if it turns out to be another snow line or great bear, uh, then you're covered. If it's something you really believe in, but you're not in it yet, and it still looks really overbought, just scale into it, just buy a position, you know, see what happens over the next month or two before you add to your position. So those types of th plays, I would use common sense. But for me, I, I stay away from the explorers and those types of moves just because I don't have the expertise there.
Well, Jordan, one other thing we hear from companies all the time is they are building their project because they want to get taken over and bought out by a larger company. It doesn't have to be a major. It could be a, a mid-tier producer, but they're hoping a larger operator comes in and takes them over. This is true not just in precious metals, but also in the base metals when we see the development stage and advanced explorers. So there's a lot of investors that get positioned dreaming of that takeover win. Oftentimes, the stock drifts down by 60, 70, 80 percent before it gets taken over, though, and it's a take under. Do you ever get positioned with the goal of having the company taken over as a catalyst or how do you look at the takeovers in relation to what you position in? No, I mean, I, I rarely, I, th thinking about what I buy, I never buy something because it's going to be a takeover. I mean, that never factors into my thinking just because it's so unpredictable and the timing of it, you, you never know. I mean, until we get into a bull market, you'll continue to see take unders, as you and others like to say. And again, as someone who focuses more on junior producers and growth oriented producers, I just I tend to, to stay away from those types of situations. I mean, the, the, the takeover should like, oh, well, this company has to be taken over. That should not factor uh, into your calculus. Because you, you can't predict when the takeover will happen, how the market's doing at that point in time, and then what price the company gets taken over. There's there's too many variables you can't account for. So that, that should never come into your thinking as to why you're buying that stock. You know, unless uh, uh, you're in a, a situation where uh, the company has a deposit. I mean, it's fairly advanced and it's, you're well known, it's a pretty good deposit, and maybe you're just speculating that you think it could get taken over the next three or six months, um, you know, and then you can buy and you can kind of define your risk. Uh, but other than that type of trade, um, a, a, as an investment, you know, never, never consider, you know, takeover into the equation. All right, Jordan. Thanks for giving us some insights on what you're looking at in some of the stocks. And again, ignore the Fed focus on individual stocks and try to pick those ones that do have potential catalysts, potential news that can buck the trend even if we do stay in what I think is obvious a bear market for the underlying stocks while we all watch the gold price continue to consolidate at generally higher levels. You do need to be very selective in these stocks right now and that's been the case for actually quite a while. So Jordan, thanks again for your time. We'll chat again next week. Have a great rest of your week.